guys, it's Proud Cat Lover. So today I'm going to be updating you not only on the baby grass spiders, but these crystal growing experiment kit that I put together and made. So I got the crystal going kit for my birthday and that was in December and it's now February. So I figured I might as well start by putting it together. So here are the small ones. They're up here and there's one large and two medium. So the kit allows you to make seven crystals, which are these four, or if you were to choose to do two of these, or not two of these, but if you were to choose to do only medium or only small, you could obviously make more, or if you did large only, then you could make more of that one certain size. Otherwise, you can do what I did if you ever get the kit. I will put a picture, by the way, in here so you know which one I'm talking about. And you can just do all sizes like I did. So, of course, if you ever get it, you'll want to read the instructions step by step. Because I was reading reviews and the persons told everybody if they were to follow everything to the T, that they turn out good. But if you, like, skip a step or anything, then there may be issues. So I read the back of the book to choose my colors. I took my little disposable cups right there. And I divided everything up. I put an S on there for small, medium, M, and a large, and L. And I already scooped out all the colors, put them in the little cups. That way I didn't have to worry about the little scooper spoon getting wet. And I didn't have to worry about getting any dye on the counter. Because it stains everything. Like you can see, my fingers have a little bit of stain on them. It's kind of hard to see now because I've washed my hands a couple times. But yeah, so I got stain on my fingers. <laughs> anyway. To the actual other reason we're here. So the grass spiders have been moved on to here because I have this tank that I sat on top of the planted tank in the closet. So they got moved. I am going to be getting rid of the bookshelf and getting a shelving unit that's very similar to the one over here so that I can have more room for the baby crusty geckos. But until I am able to take these books here to the library. These ones and those ones down there I'm keeping. Anyway, until those are taken to the library I'm not getting rid of the bookshelf yet so I figured now would be a good opportunity to grow these crystals until I actually need the space. So because I can't order the shelving unit until the 26th of this month so I have to wait seven days until I can order it because it's out of stock. So anyway, the baby spiders. I completely ran out of fruit flies to feed them and I will tell you exactly why. So as you guys know, if you've been on the channel channel long enough, I used to have grain mites. Grain mites are little tiny mites that get into your flour, your wheat, any type of grain, cereal, rice, doesn't matter. And they pretty much populate and go crazy. I had this problem about three or so years ago, two or three years ago, um, when I kept dubia roaches, I got rid of the dubia roaches, I got rid of the dubia roach food, which is where they came in, and after two and a half years or so, I got rid of the mites in my room. So, while keeping the flies, I noticed the mites all of a sudden were appearing again in the water of my crusty gecko's tanks. And so, I looked in the fruit fly cultures, and sure enough, there were grain mites in there. So, I was like, okay, we're getting rid of the grain mites right now, because I am not going to have them in my room again. So took the food and put it outside. It froze, of course. Die, dang gray mites. Anyway, I don't have food now for the spiders. So what I'm going to do is we're going to have a nice day in about three or four days. I'm not going to hurt the spiders at all to go three or four days without food because they are a pretty decent size. And then I'm going to release them outside. Sadly, there's not really that much live stuff right now when it comes to plant growth because I wanted to release them into my garden, but that apparently is not going to happen. So I'm going to put them in our evergreen tree or on the evergreen tree and hope that they make it because if they had to t hunker down for shelter, the evergreen is probably the best place to do it because it has such thick bark and thick foliage that they hopefully would be able to hunker down in there if they had to. Um, we are starting to get a little bit more decent weather, but the high for that day is going to be maybe close to 60 degrees. But I don't really have a choice because I don't want them to starve and die, so I have to let them outside. It's going to at least be a decent temperature and it's going to be sunny. So, you know, but anyway, 
So I'll go ahead and just grab this whole thing and we can see the babies. I am so sorry I've talked all this time. But yeah, I had to explain what was going on. Okay, so here is one of the jars. If you can see, there is a baby spider that's right there. You can see how big it is. There's also one right here that is pretty good size, as you can see. This one, there's just so many webs and stuff. It's kind of hard to see the babies against the leaf. Looks like there's also one right here. This one's molting, actually. So let me see what we have in this one. Looks like there's another one that's molting right now. That's right there. Let's see. Oh, I do see one that looks like it's not molting at the moment. Looks like it's right there, hiding in its little burrow that it's made out of its web. This glass does not make videoing easy because it is just wonky. But not. Nah, there is a spider right there. That's probably the best view I'm going to get you. It's too bad that these have to have emblems on them. Designs, patterns, whatever. Because it makes it difficult to view the spiders. Here's one that's right out in the open. Look at that big boy. That is a huge spider. Oh, it's offended. I called it big. <laughs> that's probably the biggest one I've seen so far, actually. It's a really big one. Oh, it looks like a, another one right here. So I definitely think that they have been uh, killing each other off. Oh, there's another one. Because I don't think there's five in each of these containers anymore. Even before I stopped feeding the flies because of the mite issue, I don't think that uh, food was a problem because I put a lot of food in there. I think it was just um, they were becoming territorial. Let me see. Oh, here's another one. So yeah, I'm not going to bore you guys and show you every single baby because there's a bunch. And a lot of them are in the molt right now. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this little update. Let me see. I mean, if I open one, I figure it's probably going to be difficult to see some of the babies. But let me try real quick and see if you can see some a little bit better. So I know it's not one of the big humongous ones, but here's a baby that's right at the lid that's hanging out. We've got, this one is the one with the smaller babies. So you can see there's one there. And then I saw one on this side, but uh, you guys can't see it from here. But yeah. So anyway, guys, I am going to go ahead and end this because I don't want to make it too long to bore you guys. But I do hope that you enjoyed getting to see the babies. And I probably will make a video when I go to release them outside um, if I can so that you guys get to enjoy seeing the babies being released into the wild. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and have a good rest of your day.